Hello everyone and welcome. In this video sponsored by Retail Me Not, we are learning about whether or not a dead battery can actually cause damage to your alternator. And so we're going to be running two different experiments, one with a dead battery on my Crosstrek, one with a charged battery on my Crosstrek, and then we're going to be measuring some of the parameters of the alternator to see what effects that has on the alternator. Now, generally speaking, as far as the electrical system of your car, you have your car battery, which is used for energy storage, used to start the car up, start the engine, and then you have your alternator. This is used for energy generation. So once the engine is running, this alternator is going to be able to provide that electricity for all of the electrical components on the car. Now ideally your alternator is there to maintain the battery's charge. It's not there to bring a dead battery up to full charge necessarily. It has the potential to do it, uh, but what we're going to try and figure out in this video through some tests is what effects will that have on this alternator by charging a dead battery versus if we were to just start with an already charged battery uh, and look at the different parameters of this alternator. Now the way an alternator works is very similar to how an electric motor works. Everything's just happening in reverse. So with an electric motor you have have a stator, this stationary portion, and you have a rotor, the portion in the middle that rotates. And so you supply an alternating current to this stator, and that creates a rotating magnetic field, and that rotating magnetic field forces this rotor, which has magnets on it, to rotate. And so with the alternator, you're simply doing the reverse. So you have a pulley, which will be uh, connected with a belt to your crankshaft, and then rotating that crankshaft will cause this pulley to be rotated, rotating the rotor. As you rotate that rotor, it creates that swirling magnetic field, that rotating magnetic field, which then induces the alternating current within the stator. Now we want a direct current for our battery, and so you have diodes within this alternator which act like uh, check valves, essentially one-way valves, and so they only allow current to pass through them one direction. So those diodes take the alternating current and they send a direct current to your battery. Now again, this video is part of a series where I've teamed up with Retail Me Not, which is actually what I use to buy this alternator. If you ever use websites like Amazon, AutoZone, or Advanced Auto Parts, these websites often have lots of coupon codes floating around for discounts on your purchase. Retail Me Not Genie is a free browser extension that's designed to compile all of the coupon codes out there so that you get the best deal on your product when you check out without you personally having to figure out which coupon code may be the best one to use. In this case, there were 15 codes found and it was able to take $25 off the price of the alternator from Advance Auto. Wonderful. You can find a link to download the tool in the video description and it works with all of the major browsers out there. All right, so let's get right into the experiment. We're going to be running two different scenarios, and for those two different scenarios, we're going to be measuring five different parameters. And so the first scenario is the car is going to start with a charged battery. So the same charge status that it's generally always at as I'm driving the vehicle around. I haven't depleted the battery at all, and it has sat in the garage overnight to remain cool. So it's going to be a cold start. We're going to idle it for about five to seven minutes. Before we start idling, we are going to check the voltage of the battery. Then after uh, we start the car, we're going to measure voltage. We are going to measure voltage both at the battery and at the alternator to see if there's any difference there. We are going to measure the amperage coming out of the alternator. We are going to measure the temperature of the alternator. And so I'm going to be using uh, this neat little thermometer here. Essentially, you just uh, it's got a little magnetic thermocouple, so I place it on the stator of the alternator and I can measure the temperature of that stator. So those are the five things which we are going to be measuring and then once uh, I let the car idle for about five to seven minutes I'm going to go actually drive it on a short route, same route for both scenarios where I'm going to drive it about 20 minutes or so, come back and then we will measure all of those things once again. For our second scenario, we're going to do the exact same thing. The only difference will be we will be starting the car with a dead battery. So we're going to use this to jump the car, but the battery will be dead when we actually start the engine. We'll then look at all of the data which we've collected and see how it differs using a dead battery versus using a charged battery and what effects that has on this alternator. Okay, so starting with scenario one with our battery already charged, measuring the battery's voltage with the car off, it is at 12.92 volts. 
Generally speaking, for these 12 volt lead acid batteries, a fully charged battery will be somewhere in the range of 12.6 to 13.2 volts. Uh, so no problem, we're starting off at 12.92. Once we start the engine, I am measuring the battery voltage, the alternator voltage, the alternator amps, and the alternator temperature. Now for this first scenario, the battery voltage and the alternator voltage were very similar. As you might expect, the alternator voltage was just slightly higher. So we're looking at about 14.45 uh, volts for the battery and about 14.47-ish, uh, a little bit higher than what the battery was reading on the alternator. As far as the alternator amps, for these first five minutes of the engine idling, uh, it started a little bit higher. It was at about 15 0.25 amps and then after about five minutes of idling it was down to 13.2 amps. The alternator's temperature started at about seven and a half degrees Celsius and by five minutes it was about 23 degrees Celsius. Then I took the car for a 20 minute drive, brought it back and measured everything once again. Our alternator amps were down to 12.9 and our alternator temperature was up to 42.5. After turning the core off, the battery's voltage was once again at 12.92, exactly where it had started. So now that we have those measurements, it is time to kill the battery for the second scenario. So with the ignition on, but the engine not running, I turned on the fan, I turned on music, I turned on the engine fans, uh, basically just running a lot of electronics in order to drain this battery down. So I drained it down till it was reading just 9.34 volts. And actually when you put the key in and turn the ignition on, it was reading just 4.5 volts. Nothing at all happened. All the screens were blank. None of the electronics worked. Uh, the car was totally dead. So turning the key did absolutely nothing. So then we took our jump pack, started up the engine, and then measured all of our parameters once again, going through the exact same scenario as the first time, just this time using a dead battery. So in this case, once we had started the engine, the battery voltage was reading just a little bit lower at 14.35. Uh, the alternator voltage was at about 14.5, which was slightly higher than previously. Our alternator amps, however, were significantly increased. So right when we started the engine, it was reading 55 amps and it went as high as 61.8 amps during those five minutes of idling. Now, both of these tests started with a cold engine. So the alternator temperature starting point was exactly the same at about 7.5 degrees Celsius. However, of course, running more amps through that alternator meant that it was now producing significantly more heat. And so it actually did heat up quite a bit faster. Uh, after 400 seconds of idling, it was at 42.6 degrees Celsius versus 24 degrees Celsius for the charged battery. Now, if we look at a plot of the two different scenarios idling for 400 seconds, you can see that they are on different trajectories. So the gap between the temperatures is widening with time. After then taking the car on the driving route for about 20 minutes and bringing it back, the alternator amps were at about 40.5 and the alternator temperature was 66.2 degrees Celsius. So next I shut the car off, I let it sit for a while and then I measured the battery voltage of this dead battery after having been charged for about 30 minutes of idling and driving. And what I was surprised to find out is that the charge, the voltage of the battery was actually 12.82. So that was significantly higher than I was expecting it to be. And also the temperature difference wasn't all that great. 66 degrees Celsius versus 42.5 degrees Celsius, not a major difference. So it actually seemed like the alternator didn't have too much of a problem charging up that dead battery. Now, there are still some things to consider here. So the battery voltage looked like it was actually fine, 12.82 volts. But based on the alternator, which was still putting out 40 amps, that's over three times higher than what it was with the charged battery. So that indicates that the battery wasn't actually charged and that the engine, the alternator, was trying to charge that battery as it had significantly higher amps. I also put the battery after it had ran that 30 minute test uh, on a battery charger to see what it said the state of charge was. It said it was 75% uh, for our second scenario. It said it was 100% for our first scenario. And it actually charged for a good number of hours before it finally read 100% again. Another thing worth considering is that outside temperatures when I was driving the car were just above freezing. And so it was very cold outside. And as a result, that means the alternator had wonderful cooling. Had it been a very warm day, we would have seen significantly higher temperatures on the alternator. 
The higher the temperature that the alternator gets, the more likely the internal components are to fail. Another thing worth considering is the health of your battery. So let's say you have a battery that's on its way out. It's not doing so hot at holding a charge anymore. Well, your alternator sees that your battery needs more charge, and so it's gonna continually use higher amperage in order to send more charge to that battery, and it's gonna be a losing battle. So you're gonna be heating up this alternator when the battery itself is dying, it's on its way out, it's no longer good, so you're putting unnecessary strain and work on this alternator in that scenario, which could lead to premature failure if it's starts to get too hot. All right, so what have we learned from all this and what would my recommendation be? So, you know, if you're stranded somewhere because your car battery is dead, obviously the smart thing to do is to jump it and get where you need to go, whether that's home or work or wherever you're going. Uh, get your car jumped, get where you need to be. That's obviously the smart solution. If you have a car at home that has a dead battery and you have the ability to charge it, that may be a better solution. So if you left an accessory light on, or perhaps if you have a project car uh, that sits for a couple months, don't know who that would apply to, uh, then you know a better solution might be just get it on a charger and then charge that battery so you don't have to overwork your alternator the second that engine starts up. Uh, either way, I was surprised it didn't seem like a huge deal for my Crosstrek here to charge it back up. Uh, you know, that could be, of course, worse if the battery was in worse condition. Uh, so a neat little experiment. Hopefully you guys learned from this. Thank you so much to Retail Me Not for sponsoring the video, and thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.